In this video, I will talk about another capacitor question. This is from February, March 16, paper 4, question 7. So let's go. So first part, define capacitance. So pretty easy. Capacitance is the ratio. Eh? C is Q over V. So that would be the ratio of charge. The thing is, if it's one mark, right, you can write the lazy version. But I'll write the full version for you. So the, the ratio of charge stored on a single plate of a capacitor. Single plate of a capacitor to the potential difference across the capacitor. So you can use the mark as a guidance on how much you should write. For example, if it's one mark, what they are looking for is just ratio of charge stored to potential difference. But if it's two marks, they would want you to mention that this is charge stored on one plate of the capacitor and the potential difference across the capacitor, especially this one, single plate. Okay, so here you have a pretty standard uh, series setup. This is a very, very common past year question. So the three capacitors are initially uncharged and they're connected in series to a battery as shown. Battery applies a potential difference V across the capacitors. Show that the combined capacitance is given by this equation. All right, so now we're going to remind ourselves that since this thing is in series, so V1 plus V2 plus V3, V1 is the potential difference across the capacitor C1. So V is equal to V1, potential difference across C1, plus potential difference across C2, plus potential difference across C3. So we're going to start with that in our derivation. We can say that V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. All right, and then we think about the capacitor equation. Now Q is equal to CV, or specifically V is equal to Q over C. So we're going to put Q over C inside. So this will be Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2, plus Q3 over C3. And you can change this to Q over C. Of course, you may be wondering, what does this big Q represent? Well, this one is for the uh, charge flow in the circuit. So if you're a bit confused, you can think about it this way. The electron that comes that is forced to move in this direction okay let's say this is negatively charged will cause this plate let me zoom in a bit will cause this plate to be negative which will induce all the other plates so it's a charge flow which is just on one single plate which is q okay the many the magnitude of the charge is q so all the charges will be the same because they are in series whatever happens to one of the capacitor happens to all of the capacitor for more information, you can refer to another recording where I discuss more about the rate of charge flow. Alright, so I'm going to carry on. Where Q is equal to Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3. Okay, and from here, I can cancel off all the Qs. Hence, 1 over C is 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. This C here is total capacitance. Or I guess if you want to... You can also call this C as the capacitance of the circuit. Lah. So the charge flow in the whole circuit, the capacitance of the circuit. All right. So where are the important uh, steps? The first one would be this one, obviously. You need to show that the sum of the potential difference is the same. And the second one is when you go from here to here. All right. So this is fairly straightforward. It's not the first time I'm recording this, so I'm going to move on to part C. Here you have a battery of EMF 12 volt. Negligible internal resistance is connected to a network of two capacitors and a resistor. Okay, this resistor is R. Okay, so you are given the values of the capacitance, 200 and 600 microfarad. And the switch has two positions, A and B. Okay, switch is moved to position A. All right, so the switch is now here. Meaning what you have uh, is this circuit. You got a 12 volt battery connected to the 200 
microfarad capacitor connected to the 600 microfarad capacitor. I feel like I can sing a bunny song here. Connected back to the circuit. You know the bunny song? The neck bone connected to the shoulder bone. By the way, the name of the bones are all wrong. Okay, anyway, this will be your circuit. Highlighted. So, uh, combined capacitance of the two capacitors, since they are both in series, uh, I can use the 1 over C equation. So that would be 1 over C is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, which will be 1 over 200 plus 1 over 600. And uh, this will get your C at 150 microfarad. Okay, so I didn't convert 200 or 600 microfarad to farad lah, because the final answer is already in microfarad. What? Part 2, the charge on the 600 microfarad capacitor. Alright, so previously we found the combined capacitance, okay, so I guess just to make my life easier instead of scrolling up and down, I will copy out the circuit. We have a 12 volt power supply, alright, TLDR, no will draw so many batteries, and we have two capacitors, like so, that we have combined them into 150 microfarad. Okay, so you could be thinking, can I use Q equal to C? But of course you can. This is for the whole circuit. So you can assume that these two capacitors, we combine combine them into 150 microfarad. So um, the charge here will be equal to the combined capacitance, 150 micro. And the potential difference is 12. So 150 times 12 is 180 times 12. Okay, so this will be 180, well, 1,800 micro, micro coulomb, or 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 3 coulomb. Alright. Okay. Next part, potential difference across the 600 microfarad capacitor. So the 600 one is the one below. So I'm just going to label it here. 200 and 600. So can I use Q equal to CV again, you wonder? Oh, well, of course you can. But this is only for the 600 microfarad capacitor. So to do so, you know that this is 600 micro. You want to look for the potential difference. But what is the charge exactly? So you can see that this charge uh, is 1.8 millicoulomb. Okay? Which means the charge that comes out here 1.8 mini I won't come out like there is mobilized to drift along the wire here will end up to be charging this plate and that's it no more because whatever happens after that is by induction you will induce this charge which will then induce this charge which will then induce this charge Okay, so all these green color one doesn't matter. In fact, all of them will have the same amount of charge because they are in series. Okay, so um, I'm just going to put it here that this will be 1.8 millicoulomb. Why? Because series connection, same amount of charge flow, same current. So you can now find your potential difference. V, you take this divided by this, that looks like 3... 0 0.0 volt. Wow, for the nth time, don't write your answer in 1SF. Write 2, at least. Okay, last part. Switch is now moved from position A to position B. Calculate the potential difference across the 600 microfarad capacitor when it has discharged 50% of its initial energy. So I guess I'm going to drag the circuit over just so that we can like collectively stare at it. It's a marvellous circuit. Alright, so I'm gonna just put it here. Ding. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is we are going to put the position of the switch uh, from A to B. So previously it was connected like this. Okay, and when it was connected like this you get 1.8 millicoulomb. You get 1.8 millicoulomb because everyone is in series. Okay, then what happens is I disconnect this. All right, 
1.8 milli coulomb is still there. I'm going to connect it this way. All right. So of course now, this negative charges here because it's connected to the negative plate. Be like a, a. You see this positive charge here? Wow. Previously we couldn't get to them because there was an air gap. But now the negative charge will be like a. I can come and meet you. And the charge will the capacitor will discharge. Okay. So this is what they meant by discharge. So of course we know the potential difference here. Okay, we have already calculated this. This is 3 volt. So I guess the question that they're asking us is um, what is this potential difference? Obviously less than 3 when it has discharged to 50% its initial energy. So I think I'm going to stick to the energy equation. E is equal to half. Um, so you have a few options uh, once again. You can have uh, half QV. You can have half uh, CV square. You can have half Q square over C. So which one you choose kind of matters. And in this case, right, my energy is decreased by 50% and I want to find the actual potential difference. So I think what I'll do is I must keep potential difference. Okay, so I ask myself, which one is constant, Q or C? Hmm, C is constant, right? Constant, right? Because this thing is 600 microfarad. You're not going to change this. So I'm going to choose this equation simply because I have another constant, which makes my life easier. Okay, so from here, E is proportional to V squared. Then you can use ratio, no? From here, we will write E1 over E2 is V1 over V2, whole thing squared. Okay, so what is the initial potential? 3.0 volt. And we want the energy to be half, so if let's say this is 1, then this will be 0 0.5. Half the initial value, we are looking for V2. Okay, so from here, I'll continue this side, yeah? So 1 over 0 0.5 is 2. 2 is equal to 9 over V square, I mean V2. So V2 square, my bad. V2 will be then equal to square root of 9 over 2. Right, and you can press your calculator, which I will right now. Press my calculator. Square root of 4.5. So this is 2.12. Alright, so ratio is my best friend. If you're like, miss, I don't want to use ratio, can I? Sure, what do you want to use? Maybe you might be thinking, can I use half QV? Sure, you want to use half QV, can. So if you want to use half QV, right, I guess the first thing you need to do is to actually uh, find, I mean, if you ask me, CV square is the best, la, but you need to find the Q. And the problem is this one is not constant. So there's a lot of things to find. And I kind of don't want the video to drag. Okay. So this is the most uh, straightforward calculation. Because if you're going to find a uh, Q, then you know that the initial charge is 1.8. You will need to find the final charge. So you will form two equations. No? I'll just roughly tell you what to do. La. So E1 is half 1.8 milli coulomb. And V1 is 3.0. E2 is half E1. And this one, I guess you could use CV square. Can half CV square is half E1. So this is your C2. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm saying that this new energy is half CV squared. Why? Because I don't know what is the new charge. I don't know, have information about that. So this will be 600 times 10 to the power negative 6. Basically, I'm already doing the question. This is V2 squared. This is half. 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 3 times 3. I guess you can find V2 this way. Let me double check to make sure it is the same. Ding, ding, ding. I guess we can cut away the half. Can we cut away the half? Yes, we can. 
So three times one point eight. Into three divide by six hundred micro, and then wait ah uh, no, my bad. The half went away. Okay, so. As I was saying, the reason why we would equate this way is because we know the new energy is half of the old energy and we will use this CV square because we don't have the value of Q. Right? So this CV square is because there's no Q. We don't know what's the final charge. We know it's less than 1.8, but halfway we don't know. Ma. No information. So this will be half. I mean, I can cancel off the half, I guess. So CV square is equal to E1. We know the capacitance is 600 micro v2 square and your e1 is this thing this entire thing is your e1 i'm gonna put inside here so this will be half 1.8 times 10 to the power negative 3 times 3 okay so now you can find your v2 you can find your v2 immediately Right, so this one will be square root of 4.5, which is the same thing, 2.12. Okay, so I think ratio is easier, lah, in my humble opinion. But if you feel that you would like to do the calculation slowly, like this, is also okay. You just need to choose uh, to select a suitable equation, lah, okay? Don't go to Holland and come back. You go to Holland and come back, then you get lost, right? So my rationale of choosing this equation is because we don't have the final charge. So and C is always constant, so we can use ratio. Alright, but if you're stuck, you can start with what you know. Lah. You know that the energy is half, which is uh, E2 is equal to half of E1 here. You know the energy is half. And at the same time, you can find an expression for E1 that you can substitute inside here. Then it's a matter of just algebra to find V2. Okay, so that's it for this pretty straightforward calculation question. If you find this helpful, once again, share it, share it with your friends. Like and subscribe our channel to support what we're doing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.